How you guys? This is Good Deeds, and I'm Dr. Renee Sunday. I know you don't have to tell me you're having an awesome, a fabulous, a marvelous day. And people say, why are you saying it all the time? Because, you know, you have to, you really have to take a step back, take a deep breath, and look at the perspective of a thing. You know, when things happen, good or bad, whatever we deem it to be, it's not as bad as we, <laughs> it's not as bad as we think. Because the thing about it, if we deem it to be not good, we actually need to learn from that. It happened to us because we can actually bear it. We can take it. Because you never know what's going on with the person next to you or the person that you may be able to tell that problem to that you're saying is a problem or the passion or whatever it is that you've gone through. What you've been through that has kind of pushed you, as you say, it actually will help somebody else. You know, that that's the truth of the matter. I know I'm, I'm a living witness going through that all the time. I don't feel that way. But as we grow in the Lord, of course, but as we grow, as we go through things, uh, as we realize it's a process in our life, that we are living ambassadors, that we actually are examples to somebody else. And that makes you actually what I always call is go with the flow. You go with the flow because you never know what's around the corner. But I know somebody, and you know somebody, of course, our Heavenly Father, that knows what's around the corner, and nothing would go on in your life that you can't bear. Yes, you got to do the three things I love to say all the time, and they're true. You got to believe, you got to trust, and you got to walk it out. And you got to show your purpose. You got to do your purpose, and you actually need to live your purpose on a daily basis. And that's what we do here at Good Deeds. We help you shine your light, and your light is your dreams, your goals, your passions, of course, your destiny in life. And, yes, that pain sometimes ends up being your purpose. But the thing about it is that it's helping somebody else because that's why we are here on this earth, okay? I'm just being real. It's to help somebody else walk out their destiny in life, to actually help other people. It's, it's really, truly about the village. Yes, it is. <laughs> but you know one thing that we really, truly, as women, me being a, a female, is we actually cherish our men. Amen? We're going to just say it like that. We actually love their leadership. We love what they stand for. We love that they are the head of our household. Amen, women? And we also, we really cherish the things that they stand for. Uh, we really had to see the love for a man has for his wife. We saw that in President Obama, okay? We saw that with Michelle Obama back to her husband, President Obama. We saw that. And we actually, it didn't like so many people from what I've heard that was married. But the thing about it is, this is a daily basis, as we are as women. Men don't do like women. You know, we tell all our business, I hate to say it sometimes, and but we emotional. Now, I'm not saying men are not emotional, but men do look at things a different way, okay? So we actually have this amazing young man with us. I mean, I just love his, his presence, the things that he stands for, the things that he do for us. He's a man of God. You know, real men connect. Dr. Joe Martin, he's, I mean, an award-winning speaker. He's an author. He's an expert in this area. From a spirituality, he's certified in building men, okay? Let's just be real. We actually need to build each other. We actually need to encourage each other and motivate each other. And that's what he's going to do. And we women, okay, ladies, now, we can sit back and listen so we can actually know how to support our man, okay, to support the men that's in our life. But we don't want to delay it. We want to welcome, welcome none other than Dr. Joe Martin. Now, you there? Yes, I'm here, Dr. Sunday. Thank you so much. I tell you, your energy is impassioned, is contagious. And as soon as I heard your voice, I think I'm in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I love it. I love it. I, I, I just said we got to, I, this, ladies and gentlemen, we're not going to get to everything. Cause, oh, I, when we reviewed his information, I was like, okay, where is he been? He needs to be in every church, every school, everywhere. <laughs> so men, I mean, you know, I, I just be, you know, honest, we all need some help. And, but tell us, you know, because I only tipped the iceberg, of course, in the things that I said initially. But tell us a little bit more about yourself, Dr. Martin. <laughs> Well, it depends, I guess, where I should start. I don't know if you want me to start with my story or start with what I do with men, but I guess I'll start with my story, and I'll let you kind of unpack it for um, the listeners. 
and I'll go in any direction, Dr. Sunday, that you want to go in. But I grew up um, in, um, in one of the toughest projects in ghettos in Miami, Florida, in a place called Liberty City. Um, and if I don't know how old your listeners are out there, but if they've ever heard of Two Live Crew or Trick Daddy, for those people who weren't always Christians, um, they would have heard of Liberty City before. Um, it was a very tough inner city ghetto. And I grew up with the parents of, of teenagers. My mom was 16. My dad was 18. Um, my dad couldn't handle the responsibility of being a dad, so he left when I was two. Never saw him again until I was an adult. And my mom, at the age of 16, and by the time he left, I was two, so that means she had two kids by the time she was 17. So she was uh, abandoned um, by him with only two kids to take care of by herself, and she could not handle it. And so my mom struggled with alcoholism, and sometimes she got physically abusive. Um, I'm not trying to, to bash my mom, but I'm just telling you the truth. And so growing up was very hard because not only did we grow up poor and there were sometimes we didn't eat because my sister uh, would have to steal food to feed us sometimes. My mom was in such a depression, she kind of just kind of disconnected from us emotionally and being the mom that she should have been. So that left us vulnerable to um, growing up in the hood. Now, by the grace of God, my sister didn't get pregnant. Um, I didn't get incarcerated. But we were still exposed to a lot of things that most children should not get exposed to. And eventually, I suffered as a result of not having a connection with my parents because I was sexually abused as a child for three years of my life. And so I became suicidal from 12 to 16. And so for the most part, listening to this story, you think, wow, what a horrible story that this kid had to go through. By the time I reached age 16, I had buried six of my friends um, due to violence and gang violence. Um, was exposed to a lot of drugs and alcohol and legal gambling, prostitution, you name it, I had seen it. By the time I graduated from high school, I had at least a dozen friends who were doing time in prison. And right now i got three family members, um, one doing a life sentence and one who just returned back to prison for the second stint. And so most people outside looking in will say, wow, what a horrible life this kid had to grow up with. But in spite of that, I was able to graduate from um, high school barely. But I went off to college. I got into a community college because I was turned down by at least 30 universities when I tried to apply to colleges. And I ended up graduating from college early at the top of my class. I was voted student of the year. Out of 10,000 students on my campus, I was the only student of color um, in all of my classes. And I graduated top of my class as a student of the year and um, made history in the state of Florida by becoming the youngest professor ever how to teach in the state of Florida at the age of 24. Now, of course, that sounds like a great story. It goes from rags to riches. I mean, I was able to buy my mom a house mover out of the projects, bought my first house before I graduated from college, started my first business at 22, um, worked for the Florida governor's office at the age of 26, had my doctorate before I was 30, um, was traveling all over the country speaking and working with um, schools, colleges, and universities. Um, couldn't have asked for a better life. Was married, had a son of my own. However, um, my past, I tell people, I was just having lunch with a guy today, and I was telling him, I said, one thing when you try to bury your past, if you're going to bury something in your past, you better make sure it's dead because it's going to come back like a zombie and <laughs> resurrect itself. And I did not deal with my trauma, the trauma that I had suffered as a kid. So when I got married, which was at the age of 22, that trauma showed back up in our marriage, and it pretty much destroyed my marriage because I started getting um, in, um, addicted to porn, started um, getting into um, sleeping around with other women, and I became what I call a serial adulterer, which means you lose count of the bodies. And, of course, no woman could tolerate that for as long a period as I was doing it. So she ended up leaving after we were married for 16 years, and she said, I'm out. I'm done. And I pretty much lost pretty much everything I had gained, um, my health, my wealth, um, risk. Um, my, I lost my integrity, my character, and ruled my reputation. And so here I was now at the bottom again, just with a bigger bank account. was well, not, not as big as it was before I got divorced, but I found myself at a crossroad, and I cried out to God, and I said, God, um, I was a very successful male, that was obvious, but I was a failure as a man, and I need help. And so I cried out to God, and God led me by his divine hand, talking about grace and mercy, because I didn't deserve it. He led me to a man who mentored me and discipled me, and that key word is discipled. And I spent five days with him in his home, and he had eight kids, married for over 30 years at that particular time, and he pretty much showed me what a real man was, because I found out that I knew everything how to be a male, of how to succeed and overachieve, but I didn't know how to be a man. And I watched him for five days, and it changed my life. And by the time I was leaving his presence, I asked him, um, would he pretty much adopt me in a sense, even though not a formal adoption, but I said, hey, I know you got eight kids, but would you adopt just one more? And that man took me under his wing, and he's been mentoring me and discipling me now for the last now 14 years. 
Um, wow. And he's been a blessing to me. He texts me every other day, and we talk about once a month. He still lives in Miami. I'm now in Chattanooga, Tennessee. But because of that man and the impact he made on my life, I decided to go into ministry full-time because I had obviously was successful in the business arena. But I wanted to go into full-time ministry to now become a certified, what I call a man builder, in helping males become men. And even though that sounds like a lofty thing, I'm not really doing it. What I'm doing is I'm getting them exposed to men like that guy, Howard, who helped me. And what I found out, there's a lot of men out there like that. They're just not connecting. That's the name Real Men Connect. They're not connecting with guys like me. I had to go find this guy. He didn't find me. I asked him to disciple me. He didn't ask to disciple me. So now I spend my days, and now it's been now going on two years I've been in ministry now, of recruiting men like that to be a blessing for men like me. And to kind of make a long story short is we now have launched a multimedia ministry that now one of our things that we do is a podcast. I do a YouTube videos for men. I, do, uh, I have a blog for men where I write articles. I write for publications, All Pro Dad and, um, and um, Lifeway, which a lot of your listeners may have heard of Lifeway, the Christian bookstore. I write for their ministry. But I do this all through my blog. And we launched a podcast that's now the number one podcast on, on iTunes for Christian men. With, in less than two years, we're now um, in, what, I think 32 different countries with over 165,000 um, downloads. And I teach men how to be men. So when I tell people I'm a man builder, it's not that I have all the answers, but I connect them to the men who do. So I'm hoping that that answers your question. I'm sure there's a lot of questions you have for me now, Dr. Sunday. have to explain that to you. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I'm I did. About to, I'm, I'm about to fall out now because I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, well, first thing I want to say is, you know, truly, truly, God's grace. I want, I want to say that first. Yes. And, and yes. then the, yes. the other thing I want to say is, you know, really and truly, and I know you probably have had people approach you, but that sounds like an amazing movie. I, I know it's. Well, yeah, I'm happy to ask me about why don't you do it? Have you sold the rights yet? No, I haven't. But I wish somebody would approach me. I would love to do a movie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, uh, you know the, the way they do it here in Atlanta. You know, a stage play and then it goes on to a movie. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? Just a side thing, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I got to say something about that. Being here in Atlanta, I, I'll connect you with some people. But the key is what you just said is don't sell your rights. <laughs> That's the key. <laughs> and and the reason I say that is so powerful that we need to get out to the world is you. We talked about so much in there. You talked about. Uh, um, suicide, and I do have a question about that, but I'm going to just name some things. Mm -hmm. The suicide, the things that mm -hmm. uh, in poverty, because I grew up in poverty, but, and, and then, mm -hmm. you know, people, when I end up telling them, that, oh, how can you, you know, da 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 but you actually, you know, the grace of God, you know, allowed you to, to get out. Uh, and the thing yeah. about it is, a lot of times when we go through things, people don't realize that we have to uh, they come back from what we've been through in childhood that we actually need to address. But what I want to go back to, because this has been in the media uh, uh, a lot in the last maybe a couple of uh, months, I think, or three months, is, is um, I think you said, and correct me if I'm wrong, you said the age of 12 to 16 you had, uh, you, you thought you wanted to commit suicide. You know, mm -hmm. um, that is pretty prevalent nowadays and uh, uh, unfortunate, you know, uh, uh, unfortunate. The young kids think about stuff, I mean, all kinds of stuff. Can you uh, give us any idea why kids, and, you know, I know there's so much going on, but what's your take on that or uh, why kids at a young age may think they need, they have no, I, I, you know, they have no outlet, they have no hope, so they think the best thing to do um, in their mind is not to be here. Right. So the question is, what do I think is, is driving that? Yeah. And uh -huh. the, the answer to that will be three simple words, okay? Um, feel, and it's based around their feelings, feelings of worthlessness, that mm -hmm. I'm not worth anything because if I was worth anything, why would my dad leave me? Why would my mom not care? Um, why wouldn't she take care of me? Why would she abuse me? Why would I be abused by some stranger? Um, so it's feeling of worthlessness, worthlessness that's one. A feeling of um, helplessness. I'm just a child. I can't. I didn't be. I didn't ask to be born in this situation, but yet I can't get out of it. There's nothing I can do about this. So now I'm feeling worthless, like I'm not worth anything. And then I feel helpless. I can't do anything. 
and then it leads to hopelessness. Um, that from this position where I am as a child is not going to get any better than this. This is it. This is my fate. This is what I got to deal with. If my friends are dying before they graduate from high school, why? How come I won't be next? Um, they used to ask us when we were kids, "What do you want to be when you grow up?" And kids would say they want to be rappers, they want to be athletes, and all this other stuff. They would ask me, um, "Joe, what do you want to be when you grow up?" And I used to say, "Alive," because when mm-hmm. you see your friends dying, you're thinking that's got to be my fate. And when you're telling somebody you want to be alive when you're 12, that's all I want to be is alive when you're 13, 14, 15, 16 years old. And so I just knew that I was not going to make it to my 18th birthday because I didn't see many of my friends who did. And so those are the three things. I would say worthlessness, um, helplessness, and hopelessness is the reason why kids internalize that. And they say, you know what, life, death cannot be much worse than what I'm experiencing right now. Wow, that's so powerful. And, and I really, to, to kind of, uh, another thing that, that just made my spirit just weep it's just the, the mission and the purpose of the Real Men Connect because I'm real big on mentors and coaches because, like you said, uh, we didn't, I, I was fortunate that I had my sister was four years ahead of me. So to be honest, mm-hmm. every, and, and I was that tag-along sister. I did whatever she did, and I was probably a, a, a nagger and all that, so she couldn't get away with too much. But the thing about uh, mentors, I see how the young, uh, the, the gentleman you spoke of played a pivotal point in your life. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. So with the programs you do now, uh, you know, just so the audience know, what process do, you know, because I guess, of course, you match them on some type of criteria, et cetera. But how is that, how do you actually develop that we, you know, that they can actually get in contact. Uh, is there certain age groups uh, that you deal with, certain locations? Now, that's a great question, and we we don't do it like a matchmaking service per se. I don't connect like, let's say, if a guy contacts me, say, oh yeah, I got the perfect match for you. We don't do that. What I do is I create an environment that men thrive in, and I get them connected via social media. We have a, uh, I, I, we have several things, and I'm going to throw out a bunch of matches. You'll see how this comes together. Um, and on social media, what I, I have something called Real Men University. It's a private social group. Not any man can get in it. They actually have to request to join, and then they have to go through an application process. This allows them in that community, and they get to exp- be exposed to a lot of men on this campus. So imagine every day there's a lesson being taught by some faculty members who I've recruited through my podcast to teach a lesson on money, on sex, on marriage, on children, on health. And every day those teachers will teach them, and the guys get to interact with each other. What do they learn from it? So they're learning through that community, and they're now talking to each other. I didn't formally introduce them. Are you following me on this? They're just naturally mm-hmm. talking to each other, and they're asking each other for help. That's one avenue. Another thing that I do through our podcast, I interview these men to find out what, you know, now I just don't want to hear about their successes. Tell me how you struggle. Tell me your strategies, how you overcome it. I put that out there so men can listen to that. So those guys who are afraid to be around other men, they'll secretly listen to the podcast, and then eventually they'll reach out to me by email, call, or whatever, and they'll ask mm-hmm. to be in our community. Another thing that I do is for those guys who are afraid to even listen to a podcast because somebody might catch them listening to it, I created free resources. I created um, two resources that I give them for free just by coming to our website. One is called the, Spirit, the Real Man Spiritual Leader Blueprint, and that's 21 practical ways to love and lead your family. It's exactly what I learned the hard way. I'm giving them the 21 lessons that I learned that can help them do that. Because most men want to do it. They just don't have been taught how to do it. So I show them all the steps that I took to get to where I'm at spiritually. Not what I did in business, but what I did as a husband and a father because I'm now remarried, happily married, and passionately in love married. And so I teach them all that, and I give that away. And then we have another book that we give them that I wrote several years ago for my son called Are You the Man? 201 Lessons I Wish My Father Would Have Taught Me. So imagine if they never mm. listen to the podcast. They never go on social media. Those two resources, they can get that while I'm talking to you right now by going on our website. So I have that available. Also, I have over 100 videos on our YouTube channel for guys who say, I don't like to read. I don't like to listen. I, you know, I just want to watch it. <laughs> and so it's me in my car driving, teaching manhood lessons, keeping it real because I talk about everything on it. And there are short lessons, no more than five to seven minutes. And guys can listen and do that. We also have an app. 
that if they don't, if they're just totally socially inept and don't want to talk to anybody, it can, they can download it on their phone for free and have access to the university, to those resources, to the videos. You're starting to get the point now, is that we mm-hmm, put it out mm-hmm. there so much that there's no excuse why they can't either learn, talk to somebody, confess to somebody, ask for prayer, or get help. I do another thing that I'm doing even here locally. I run, I run four groups of men here in town that's not associated with my church. They're each at a different spiritual level. The guy who's afraid to go to church, the guy who just goes to church but doesn't do anything, the guy who wants to be a better husband and a father, and he's now deeper into spiritual things. And I have a fourth group of guys who want to go out and reach other men. Are you following me? So Mm -hmm. to answer your question, I have multiple entry points to to meet that man where he is, not where just I want him to be. Because you know in the Christian world, if they don't come through our doors of the church, we miss them. Now right. we won't miss them because I'm covering every possible angle, social media, YouTube, app, website, blog. I even write for different um, publications to kind of lead them back to everything that I do. So that's how we get them connected. I don't formally say, okay, you need to meet this person. They do it organically by being exposed to all these different resources, if that makes sense. Oh, Lord. I'm, I'm just, that's powerful. Uh, because the thing, of, you're right, <laughs> and we miss so many people because uh, I forgot what the statistics is, but I think between last year and this year, it's almost 40% of the people that used to go to church don't go to mm-hmm. church anymore. I think I, I think it was about, it might have been more than that, but it wasn't less than 40%. Mm-hmm. So we, right. and we need to get outside the wall. And what I really like when I actually um, listen to several shows on your podcast, ladies and gentlemen, he talks about, Everything, the things that we don't, act, we act like we don't need to talk about in church. He talks about everything mm-hmm. because we actually don't know the answer. I mean, we don't know the yeah. answer, and then we end up uh, getting in things that we didn't want to get in, or we end up making decisions without the right education. So I really salute you that you have uh, so many different entry points. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're on our website, if you're on our uh, social media and also through listening now, uh, you uh, we have the information that they can get your free uh, books that you offer and also uh, how to get in touch with you, social media, and also to get that podcast. Y'all got to be part of that podcast. You have no excuse. You download the app and click a button. You start <laughs> you're here. That's you're right. Here. You start um, listening. That's that simple. <laughs> Wow. Well, let me ask you this, because I know somebody going to ask this question. Uh, in regards mm-hmm. to the amazing platform you have, and it comes so natural with you on your podcast, do you, also you do go out to different ministries, speaking platforms, and all that as well? Yes. Um, I speak, uh, you can imagine, I go to a lot of men's conferences in which I'm usually a speaker at that conference, showing them how to either, and my topics are more specific about men connecting with other men. So let's say, for instance, I wouldn't go out there and talk about porn addiction, even though I could talk about that. I could talk about being a good husband. I could talk about that or being a bad husband. But what I do when I go out to speak at churches or at men's conferences is usually show them how to connect with other men, the importance of having men in your life. Because I tell men that you're only as spiritually as strong as the number of stronger men you have in your life spiritually. And so you show me a man who I don't care how much of the Bible he knows. If he doesn't have a lot of account- accountability, he can't be counted on. That's when you see. That's why you see men who are in high positions in ministry who fall. You say, I can't believe he fall. I don't. Only question I ask is how many other men were speaking into his life, because mm. if he is surrounded by great men, those great men will guard him and protect him and keep him from harm and danger. That's the reason why uh, uh, Billy Graham went so many years doing what he was doing because they had something called the Billy Graham rule where he didn't travel by himself. He had other men with him. So when I go to these conferences, I speak about the importance of men having other men in their lives. And the, question, and the thing is, they know it's important, but they don't really know how important it is until they hear me demonstrate it and talk about it. And that's when they get it, and that's when they want to find out how can they get connected to our ministry because they realize um, that it's that important. And Dr. Sunday, I'll, I'll make this distinction. This is, what, this is a riddle. And you can have anybody who's listening do this with the man. And the man won't have the answer. But when you tell him the answer, you're like, man, I never thought about it that way. This is a riddle I ask the men when I speak at men's conferences. I say, give me the one thing that every man needs 
every man, whether he's a believer or non-believer, he needs, but he's afraid to admit. What's the one thing he needs, but he's afraid to admit? Now, you can imagine, we crack mm-hmm. up because men immediately go to women and sex, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what they think. Of. Man, he's the one that said, no, that's not true. I said, Jesus wasn't married, and he didn't have sex. Paul was never married, and yet those two men alone were great men of God. Are you following me? And so... Mm-hmm. It can't be a woman. They survive without it. I said, but even Jesus demonstrated he needed it. And Paul definitely needed it because there's proof in this shit. So what is it? What is that one thing that men need but they're afraid to admit that they want? And here's what it is. Authentic brotherhood and fellowship with other men. And I said, you don't believe me? I said, think about this. How many men, if you ask them, how many men would you, by show of hands, would want a real brother who would stick, stand, and stay with you, who's authentic, who's real, who's transparent with you, will respect you even when you're at your lowest point, who won't stand in judgment of you but pick you up when you fall. If you went to jail, he'll bail you out and then get on you after you got out. He won't do it while you're mm-hmm. in there. You can call him at 1 in the morning. You can tell him your deepest, darkest secret and your fears, and he's going to love you anyway. How many want a man like that in your life? Guess how many raised their hand? All of them. And yeah, I said, now, how many you have those types? I said, how many do you have that type of man? That's when you see the hands go down. I said, now, what did I say? It's the number one need. But what did I also say? That they're afraid to admit that they want it. They said, now, Joe, we all say we want that. Why would we be afraid to admit it? I said, what if a man came up to you and asked you this question? You know what? I'm really feeling vulnerable right now and weak, and I really need a brother I can be really intimate with so I can have a close relationship. They start laughing. I said, first thing you would mm-hmm. think, that dude's gay. You see what I mean? I said, now, you laugh, but yet... I'm going to give you another voice, a masculine voice, because we don't know what God is. But who says this? Doesn't God say this? Not the Sunday. I long to be with you. I long to have a relationship with you. I know every part of your inner being, and I want you to know my heart. I want to spend time with you. Matter of fact, I'm jealous of your time you give to other people. I want to be with you. I want to be what you – when you cry out to me, I want you to cry out to me. And see if I won't be there in your deepest, dark, darkest hour. And I said, y'all not laughing now. Is God gay? No, God ain't gay. God made us this way. He made us for a relationship. And the problem that we struggle with as men is we don't have a great relationship with other men. And I said, here's a great example to prove it to you beyond a shadow of a doubt. And Dr. Sunday, I don't know how old you are. I don't know how old the listeners are, but you have never heard a man. How many men have you ever heard say this ever in your lifetime? You know what, Dr. Sunday? I got too many great godly men in my life, and I need to cut some of them loose. Have you ever heard anybody say that, ever? No. You know what? I don't know no. why I got all these great men. I don't need to be hanging around all these great men. But what they will tell you, mm-hmm. they don't have enough of them. They don't, they don't have, have enough any. of them. Or have any. And I guarantee you, they don't have any. And so the fact is, if nobody's ever complained about having too many, you can't have enough. And here's the great, and I say, if that doesn't prove it, this is what I shared with that men's conference. And this doesn't prove it. I said, let's look at Jesus. If there was anybody who didn't need anybody because he had everything because he was God incarnated, why did Jesus have his 12 disciples? And why did he have an inner circle of three men if he really needed nothing? Because not that Jesus really needed it. He did it to show us an example that even I, right. who's the father, I'm showing you that, no, I don't need this, but there's a reason I'm showing you this because I'm letting you know you can't live without it. And when he asked his disciples mm. to pray for them, he, now, he didn't need them to pray. They didn't pray. They fell asleep. But he still had That's relationships easy. with him to show us that, Joe, if, I, if it's not too good for me to be in a relationship, what's your excuse? God, I don't have enough men. I don't have the right men. And that's why I'm doing Real Men Connect, so you can never use that as an excuse. So when you ask the question, what do I do? Yeah, I speak at churches. I speak at men's conferences. I speak at non-Christian conferences, still talking about them. I just don't use the word discipleship. I use mentors because that's mentors, easy for them to yeah. swallow. But it's basically the same thing. Paul was a mentor to Timothy. David had Jonathan. You know, Abraham had Lot you know, and had Aaron. When you look mm-hmm. through the Bible, there's relationships all over the place. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, we mm-hmm. come up with other men. So I'm not, yeah. Exactly. And because, you know, one um, guy shared with me, one of my friends, he told me, and I never thought about this. He said, Joe, you know what? He said, I know why the devil's after, um, after men. He said, Joe, you put me in some water, 
He said, man, I can, he said, I'm okay until that, water gets, and until that water goes over my head. He said, but once that mm-hmm. water goes over my head, though, then I start getting nervous because you put me under that water long enough, my whole body's going to die. He said, you kill the head, the body's going to go with it. Wow. And so the thing is, we have been called to be the spiritual head, and the enemy said, okay, women, y'all can be what y'all want to be. All we're going to do is attack the head. We attack the head, you will be a mess too. Yeah, exactly. And you show me, show me a woman out there who's listening to this, and you told me if God gave you a man who loved you like Christ, you don't think your marriage would be different? Oh, yeah. But the fact oh, yeah. is, the problem is, Dr. Sunday, that we weren't shown how to do that. And we need another right. man. No man, I said, no good man can become a, God, a great man without the help of a godly man. He needs a godly man in his life. To do that, mm-hmm. I was lucky to find mm-hmm. Howard, and then now I've been blessed to have several men like Howard in my life now. Oh Lord, this I'm so <laughs> You so powerful. I mean, I told you, ladies and gentlemen, that we want to get out. We have to continue this conversation. This, you are so powerful, Dr. Mark. God bless you. And you know, time goes by so quickly here. We got to get you back. <laughs> we got, and so any any time, any time. I know you need to get. But tell us how again. Uh, we mentioned it briefly, but tell us how we can actually be uh, social media support you. Social media, and also how we can connect you uh, to get your resource, and also be, you know see if the men, the men, if they actually can get into your uh, your actual community. Two quick ways because everything is connected to everything what I do. So they can go to our website at realmenconnect.com. Just go to realmenconnect.com. That will lead you to everything that we do and everything that we have available to you. And so you can do that. And then if you want to get the podcast, just click on a button. Everything's there. Or if they're, they don't have time to get to a computer, just go to their either their, um, um, their Google um, Play Store or their iTunes account or in their, their, their app store on their phone, whether it's I, um, iPhone or Android. And type in the word Real Men Connect in this search. Download our app. It's free. And the same thing you get on your app will give you access to our website, our podcast, our YouTube videos. So no, either way, realmenconnect.com or download our Real Men Connect app through their um, app store. And they'll get it. Aww. And they can contact me. Well, they can, they'll find out how to email me. <laughs> they can do anything to contact mm-hmm. me. They can even email me personally through it. Well, Dr. Joe Martin, we just thank you so much, one, for being in your purpose and being here with us on Good Deeds. I, I just, ooh, I'm just overjoyed. <laughs> but thank you so much for all that you do that God has graced you to do to help others. And thank you for having me, Dr. Sunday. I appreciate it. Anytime, just let me know. Yes, yes. Ooh, ladies and gentlemen, I know the women just said, let me get that replay link so I can transfer it over. <laughs> but the thing is, let's do everything in love. If you need to get in contact with us for advertising sponsorship, you know how to contact us, www.renee, which is R-E-N-E-E, Sunday.com. And just like Dr. Martin, everything is one place. That's a marketing tip. If you want the social media, if you want the publishing, all that stuff is there. But I always remember, you were created for, you were born for a reason, and you actually here for a reason. You know, you have to be able to walk out your purpose. The three things you have to always remember is believe, trust, and walk it out. You know, we love you, love you, love you. You have to don't stop, get it, get it. And you know, this is Good Deeds, and I'm Dr. Renee Sunday. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>